It is settled, then. Please excuse me, and enjoy your conversation at your leisure. Thank you for arranging everything for us, Malus. Excuse me, miss. Do you need anything from us? Mm. Oh. Hey, Navia's all quiet. This isn't like her at all. I'm sorry that I only came to visit after all this time. After what happened, I didn't know how I was supposed to face the two of you. Ah, if it's about that, there's no need to apologize. After my husband died, Spina di Rusula sent us a lot of Mora and support. I understood your guilt and apology to be genuine. But aren't all of those things nothing compared to the loss of Jacques? I can understand the kind of pain that comes with losing a father so needlessly. You don't understand at all. I didn't know how to face you, because I didn't know what I could possibly bring as a consolation gift. I know only the full truth could bring closure to you. And to all of us. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I appreciate the sentiment. But you don't have to carry all that guilt. On the matter regarding my husband, my daughter and I have more or less found our answer already. Would you mind sharing it with me? I really can't believe that my father could ever bring himself to shoot Jacques. I always knew that my husband's money was earned through others' suffering. He told me countless times that if he could turn back the clock, he would never go into the synth business again. He had many regrets, and felt that he took the idea of providing for his family too literally. For the longest time, he thought Mora was everything. So when Mr. Callus came to him with a proposal, he accepted it almost immediately. He tried to be as careful as he could, but even so, he was still found out by the higher-ups. They found out about his betrayal? Papa didn't say that exactly, but Papa did tell me that I should never be ungrateful. Before he left that day, he told me that he had no choice. It was only later that I realized it was his final farewell to the two of us. I don't know that for sure, but you could say that's the conclusion I eventually came to. Which is why I'm the one who should feel guilty. Callus had always taken great care of us, both when he was still alive and after he passed away. Even if he fired the shot that killed my husband, it was likely in self-defense. It is impossible for me to hate him for what he had done. But Mama, why is Papa still the bad guy if he did the right thing? Papa always wanted to be a good man. So why did he have to do a bad thing in the end? Well, things aren't always as they seem. You still feel like your papa was a good man, right? Yeah, papa was a really good man. The best in the whole world. Then you should hold on to that. If a good man had to do a bad thing, then he must have had his reasons. Regardless of whether he left you a parasol or a sword. He must have done so to give you a better life. Oh. Thank you for everything you've told me. I will definitely find the truth. The current state of things is not something I'm willing to just sit back and accept. Thank you. I'm very grateful to hear this from you. Even though your personality is quite different from your father's, your determination when you speak is really similar. You really think so? That's the first time anyone said that to me. Are you okay, Navia? Ah, I'm fine. Don't worry. Let's investigate the three suspects next. Laurent should be nearby, 
And we should be able to find Thierry and Uncle Marcel in the city. I'll get myself together on the way. So please don't worry. Greetings, boss. How may I be of assistance today? I'm sure you've heard about what happened at the Opera House. Someone got turned into water right in front of us. Yeah, I've heard. With something that dramatic, I'm sure journalists will milk it for all it's worth. And it'll be all the talk for the next several weeks. It also reminded me, on the day that the incident happened with my father, it was raining outside, and we found some clothes left at the scene. After my partner here put the dots together for me, I feel like we should try to reopen his case. Can you do me a favor and try to recall what happened that night? Hmm... Let me think. Mr. Callus was feeling pretty upbeat that day. So he was drinking and bantering away with us at the table. After that, he told us that he wanted to go get some fresh air. So we let him go without thinking much of it. Who knew that we would hear two gunshots ring out right after? My first reaction was that Mr. Callus's life was in danger. So I grabbed my holster and made a mad dash toward the scene. But when I got there, it was already too late. Mr. Callus was standing over a dead body with a gun in his hands. All we could do was look back and forth at each other, not knowing what to say. So you also remember two gunshots then? Indeed. The guards said that the first shot didn't hit anyone, while the second killed Jacques. But I've never really bought that explanation. Reason being, Mr. Callus had left his gun on the table. I even made sure to confirm that before running to the scene. But according to the guards, that doesn't mean he couldn't have had other guns on his person. About the clothes left at the scene that you mentioned, do you think there was a third person there who was turned into water? At least from our perspective, my father had no reason to kill, so he would also have no reason to bring an extra gun with him. The gun he was holding probably belonged to Jacques, or a third person on the scene. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you're saying Mr. Callus ended up with the gun because he seized it from one of the other guys? But hold on. If that's what had happened, then why didn't he share the truth with any of us? He didn't even want to face the Oratrice machine, and chose instead to prove his honor in a duel. Did he lose all faith in the courts after seeing someone dissolve right in front of his eyes? About that, Malus told me a thing or two, so I think I can understand why he committed to the duel. I'll tell you everything once the whole truth has been revealed. I understand. Then I'll leave Mr. Callus's honor in your hands, boss. And if I may just say one more thing, the whole Callus the Unfaithful epithet has been a thorn in my side since the day it was invented. Many people have laughed at me for still calling him Mr. Callus, even after so many years have passed. But it was Mr. Callus's trust that allowed me to rise through the ranks of Spina di Rosula and live the life I lead today. No matter what others might say, he'll always be the man I respect the most. And he'll always be my boss. Don't worry. I will definitely find the truth. You and all our other comrades at the Spina deserve to know the truth as well. It's me! Oh! Now, what brings you here, Miss Navia? I've heard that you made quite the name for yourself at the Opera House. Oh, so you've caught news of that already. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm also a member of the Guards, you know. 
The way you make it sound, people would think I was sent off to Poisson because I had done something wrong. Are you sure there isn't a little bit of truth in that? Under normal circumstances, shouldn't you have been called back to the city already? <laughs> I mean, where I work is really up to me. Let's just say I enjoy the ambiance of Poisson. Callus did a fantastic job running the town, building Spina di Rasula from the ground up and clearing many obstructions in my way. It would be next to impossible for me to find a similarly easy but high-paying job in the city. <sighs> anyway, enough chit-chat. Are these two friends of yours? You, uh, here for some formal business? Ah, uh, yes. These two are my partners. What happened at the Opera House made us realize that Lenny's case, and my father's, may be related. We're trying to reinvestigate the details of my father's old case. Ah, I get it. You think there might be more to the case now that we know people can be dissolved into water, right? I was also flabbergasted when I first heard of it. If you want to go through the original files from your father's case, I can help you look for them. That'd be much appreciated. Thank you. Actually, I have another question. Do you have the authority to dispatch Gardamex? Of course. Without them, I couldn't possibly handle Poisson on my own. Why do you ask? We definitely can't use them to forcefully get more evidence for your father's case. Well, you see, just recently, we were attacked by a horde of unnumbered Gardamex in the city. So... <laughs> if you, hypothetically, wanted to do something against me, all you would need to do was get rid of the Mecha serial numbers and send them after me. <laughs> then you think too highly of my abilities. Dispatching Mecha is very different from controlling them. If I had to make an analogy, when you order a dish, the chef will make it for you. You can ask the chef to cook, but... Not to massage your shoulders or carry your baggage. If you try to make unreasonable demands, the chef would just think you're out of your mind and ignore you completely. The same goes for me and my Gardamex. Removing a serial number is also not as easy as you might think. There are a lot of complex steps to it, and it's almost impossible to keep it a secret. So I can promise you, those mecha were definitely private units. They're certainly not cheap. So, whoever their owner is must be super rich, powerful, or both. Now that you mention it, though, being in the synth business would definitely be profitable enough to afford this. Oh, <laughs> then you're officially in the clear, Thierry. <laughs> well, thank you for the vote of confidence, Navia. Jokes aside, I'd like to wish you all the best with your investigation. I'll be staying in the city for a little while, so just come find me if you need any support from the guards. How may I help you? I'm here to see Marcel. Could you please let him know? You can just say Navia's looking for him. Sure. I will let him know right away. Ah, Navia. Hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm not as young as I used to be, so my legs are giving out a bit. Oh, it's all right, Uncle Marcel. There's no need to stress. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about what happened in the Opera House. I'm sure you saw everything too, right? Yes, uh, I've never seen anything so strange. Oh, you were at the Opera House too? That's right. I went there with Navia to see the magic show. 
Who knew it would turn into a whole murder mystery? I also witnessed your marvelous sleuthing work. Quite impressive. To beat the Hydro Archon at her own game on her own turf, I can already imagine everyone in Fontaine discussing your exploits over a few glasses of wine. Oh, Paimon doesn't want to become the talk of drunkards. <laughs> Apologies. It's just how Fontaine is as a nation. Everyone loves drama and theatrics. Uncle Marcel, you've also noticed that other thing, right? The fact that humans can dissolve in water? Yes. I was reminded of your father's case right away. Is that what you're investigating now? Exactly. I still don't have much solid proof, but I can sense that the other side has already begun to act. Oh, and what makes you say that? We were attacked on Araneus by some unnumbered Gardamax. And there was also an attempt to get me to drink water from the Primordial Sea. If not for the vigilance of my partner, I probably wouldn't even be here talking to you right now. Oh, you're giving us too much credit. Wasn't it you who protected us? Alas, it seems things are heating up again. The peace that Callus sought so dearly will soon become a thing of the past. But rest assured, Navia, Poisson will always remain a safe haven for you. If you're scared, you can always return there. If anyone dares to lay their hands on you there, the Confrerie of Cabriere will use its funds to the last Mora to bring them to justice. Thank you, Uncle Marcel. But I don't intend to go into hiding. I'm going to strike while the iron's hot. Do you have any new thoughts on my father's case? Ah, about that. Sorry, my age is catching up with me, so it'll take me a while to recall my memory. The Confrere was responsible for that banquet, so I was out and about the whole time making sure things were running smoothly. I didn't even have the time to drink with the guests. Then I heard the sound of a gunshot, and the rest was history. Oh, it's okay. No need to push yourself. We'll ask around some more, see if there are any valuable clues elsewhere. Sounds good. Just let me know if you ever need Mora. All my wealth comes from Callus's patronage and support. I'll spend however much it takes to clear his name. We've talked to all three suspects, purely based on their conversations with me. None of them sounded particularly suspicious. Mm, I, I suppose that's to be expected, though. If a single conversation's all that's needed to find them out, then my father wouldn't have needed to investigate the case for so many years. Anyway, even though we didn't make a breakthrough, let's still compile what we were able to find. Hmm. But... Where should we start? Ah, you're right! Flora mentioned that Callus probably only ended up with the gun because of circumstance. Hmm, that makes sense. According to Jacques' family members, he already told them that he had been discovered and that he had no choice before he left home that day. Hmm, if I had to guess, he probably received an order from the synth boss to kill my father. Had he refused, he and his family's lives would have been forfeit. So, Jacques fired the first shot? Oh? And why is that? already knew that he was just being used as a tool for murder. And once he had completed his mission, he'd be of no more use to his boss. 
Huh. So, what would make more sense from his perspective would be to turn his back on the Order and seek protection from my father. Mm, makes sense. But without evidence, that's still just a theory. Besides, Jock, the attack from the Gardamex has been bothering me quite a bit as well. It's obvious that our enemy has become more antsy after the secret of the primordial seawater was revealed. Do you think he knew, even then, that we'd follow this lead to the end? Given everything that's happened since, it's quite possible. But who among the three suspects would have the ability to control privately owned Gardamex? Uncle Marcel? Uh, hmm. My father did really trust him. And they worked together on a large number of projects. Maybe that's how he got to know Jacques. And with funds from the Confrerie, he could also afford a large number of Gardamex. It's still really hard for me to imagine, though. After all, Uncle Marcel has been around since I was just a child. Also, wouldn't this mean he has been spending a whole lot of mora and energy to fight his own synth business? Flora? Uh, it is true that he was closest to my father, and thus had the best chance of learning about his dealings with Jacques. But, as Spina de Rosula's advisor, his work mostly deals with personnel and security. So, he shouldn't have much means when it comes to finances. So you're saying he's too broke to afford a mecha army? Exactly. He can't. And even if he could, I don't think he would be able to dispatch a whole group so quickly. Thierry, you say? Huh. It is possible that he's figured out a way to convert the Gardamex for personal use. But I didn't feel like he was lying when he was talking to us about the Mecha. I also don't think he'd be able to keep that kind of tampering under wraps. Yeah, had he actually tampered with the Mecha, we'd be able to prove it with a simple check of the guard's inventory. If the Mecha were taken from the guards, it should be pretty easy to find out when and how that happened. <sighs> Who could it be? You know, if you think everything through, Uncle Marcel is indeed the most suspicious of them all. Could we be missing other suspects? Malus didn't know about the people turning into water thing when he narrowed it down to these three, did he? <sighs> Malus has always been very reliable, and his judgment of others' trustworthiness has been fair and well considered. When he laid out his case for the three, the rationale he gave me made a lot of sense as well. The suspect is knowledgeable about the Spina's internal affairs, has the means to dispatch Mecha to assassinate us, and possesses significant intellect and foresight. <sighs> Even if I don't want to believe it, I'm starting to see how things could all tie back to Uncle Marcel. trump card on top of all the theorizing and speculating. Yes. Malus did say that charging straight in there would be extremely risky. But we don't have any other options right now. We need far more solid proof before we can hope to go charging in on our enemy. Navia, here you are. Oh, I've been looking for you. Huh? Aren't you the guy from the guards? Did something happen? Yeah. News came from Araneus just after you left. We've got another trial on our hands. Wasn't that place built specifically for holding trials? What's so newsworthy about this one? I know, I know. But they said the person they're putting on trial is a Fatui Harbinger called Tartaglia. What? Is that someone you know? Yeah, we know him. 
maybe even a little too well. Well, he's been accused of being the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. It's absurd, don't you think? Wait, how? None of our investigations have had anything to do with him. That's what I thought was strange about it, so I came to tell you the news right away. If the charge against him stands, then it'll be next to impossible to get the guards to support any of our planned investigations. Right. Because they'll think they've already found the culprit. Yeah. And it'll be a lot harder then to clear Mr. Callus's name. Hmm. I understand. <sighs> well, partner, what do you think we should do? We still haven't found any conclusive evidence. Huh? Split up? What do you mean? <laughs> Just as expected of my partner. Since this is a trial about the serial disappearances case, the culprit's attention will be focused on Araneus, leaving his home base wide open. You're right. This is our best opportunity. <laughs> All right then, let's do this. I'll stall them at the Opera House and charge Marcel as the true culprit. I won't have any chance of making that charge stick, though, unless we find more evidence. It'll be up to you to make it back in time and hand the decisive evidence to me. We'll help you, just like you helped us in Lenny's trial! Demoiselle, please allow us to accompany you. I'm ready. Ah, oh, <laughs> Malou, Silver, when did you two get here? We heard that you'll be leaving Poisson, and figured that you might require our assistance. It's our hope that your confidence will be bolstered with the two of us by your side. <laughs> Thank you so much. Then, let's make haste for Araneus. Paimon, Traveler, I'll see you at the Opera House. See you then! <laughs> Now that Navia has set out for Araneus, we should also get going. The location has already been marked on the map, so let's head over. Huh. According to Malus's info, the synth production base is underwater. Let's go and try to find the entrance. that leads to the synth production base. It sure doesn't seem out of the ordinary at all. Ah, you're right. An important place like this is bound to have a ton of protective measures and mechanisms. Navia's probably arguing up a storm right now to stall for us. It would appear that I must repeat my question again, Mr. Tartaglia. Do you accept the charge that you are the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case? To be perfectly honest... ...in self-defense.